Hey there! Have you ever wondered what it takes to bend your big toe and try to crumble up a towel with it? You just need a small amount of patience and a great amount of interest in anatomy in order to find out more about this seemingly inconspicuous movement. The muscle allowing you to do this is the flexor hallucis longus. And in this tutorial, we'll learn all about its functions. You can see it now isolated for you on the screen. If you look closely at its location, you can see that the flexor hallucis longus is located quite deep at the back of your leg, with several muscles covering it. Therefore, it shouldn't be a surprise to find out that it is part of the deep muscle group of the posterior compartment of the leg. The other group which is part of this compartment is the superficial group of muscles, and they're the ones covering the flexor hallucis longus. Let's return to the flexor hallucis longus to find out more about it. You can see it again isolated on the screen in all its glory. To help you bend your big toe and allow you to perform the functions you'll hear about, the flexor hallucis longus needs a nerve supply. This muscle is innervated by the tibial nerve, which you can see right now highlighted on your screen. The tibial nerve is one of the terminal branches of the longest nerve of the human body, which is the sciatic nerve. It's always useful to note the root values of the nerve associated with the muscle we're learning. In this case, the root values of the tibial nerve. Specifically, its muscular branches to the flexor hallucis longus, the S2 and S3. Before diving into the heart of this video, firstly let's take a closer look at the attachments of the flexor hallucis longus. I'm sure you're already aware of the idea that form follows function, so if you understand where a muscle begins and ends, you can most likely deduce what it does. According to our friend on the screen, we can see that the flexor hallucis longus originates here, along the inferior two-thirds of the posterior surface of the fibula, as well as the adjacent interosseous membrane. In this journey, the flexor hallucis longus passes posterior to the distal end of the tibia and travels through a groove located on the posterior aspect of the talus bone. From here, it crosses onto the calcaneus bone and passes through another groove, located under the sustentaculum tali or talus shelf of the calcaneus. The tendon then continues along the length of the plantar aspect or the sole of the foot before it inserts into the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe. It passes between two sesamoid bones in inside the tendons of the flexor hallucis brevis, which protect the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus. Now that the hard part is over and we've seen the origins and insertions, I'm sure it's very easy for you to identify the joints moved by the flexor hallucis longus, and more importantly, the directions of those movements. The first and most obvious joint is the talocrural joint, more commonly known as the ankle joint, which you can see now highlighted for you on the screen. It's the point where the distal ends of the tibia and fibula meet the superior part of the talus. The second joint is the subtalar or talocalcaneal joint, which is formed at the junction between the talus and the calcaneus, which are two bones of the foot. A third joint affected by the flexor hallucis longus is the metatarsophalangeal joint. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. All you need to master anatomy and histology in no time. I'll see you there.